Are you ready to revolutionize your relationship with money? Welcome to the Finding Financial Freedom podcast with The Frugal Position, where Dr. Disha Spath will be your companion on this exciting financial adventure. Get ready to conquer debt, build wealth, and embrace a mindful spending lifestyle that will empower you to live life on your own terms. Pearson Rabbit's story begins with Dr. Stephanie Pearson, a passionate ob at the height of her career. But then, a shoulder injury struck during a precipitous delivery. Her dreams were shattered, leaving her unable to practice medicine. Determined to make a difference, Stephanie became an advocate for her peers, guiding them through the complex disability process. Alongside insurance expert Scott Rabbits, Stephanie founded Pearson Rabbits, a company determined to approach insurance differently. Together, they set their mission to educate and empower physicians to protect their most valuable asset, their income and the most important people in their life, their family. Today, Pearson Rabbits serves the medical community in all 50 states. At Pearson Rabbits, they understand the unique concerns of physicians. Physician-founded and physician-focused, Pearson Rabbits builds human connections before they create quotes. Life can change in an instant. It's hard to imagine that a sudden illness or injury could leave you and your family in a devastating financial situation. But with a little planning and guidance, you can prepare for every possibility. Visit PearsonRabbits.com to schedule your consultation with a Pearson Rabbits advisor. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to those who celebrate. It is a tumultuous time in the world with what's going on in the Middle East and Ukraine, but it's very important to slow down and reflect on our blessings as well. My family and I just got back from a wonderful trip to Spain over Thanksgiving. It was a really short trip because Josh has limited time off and I just started a new job, but it was so great. I'm a firm believer in traveling often and regularly. My kids and I really value travel for the uninterrupted family time it gives us and for all the things we learn through our shared experiences. Thanks to planning and budgeting, we can make it happen and without guilt. A lot of people like to propose the false dichotomy that financial planning and saving or being frugal means putting off all fun things for later, but they're mistaken. Knowing that we're meeting our savings and financial goals makes traveling with what's left over even more fun. Of course, I still search for the best value for the trip and try to save money where I can. But guilt-free travel is my favorite type of travel. Let me tell you how we got the most out of this trip. So I stocked Europe routes for a little while on Google and Hopper, so I knew the going rates. I got a notification from Going.com, which was formerly Scott's Cheap Travels, that Europe's routes were going on sale. So I jumped on it. It helps to have a travel fund set aside for these opportunities. Sure, we could have gotten a lot better price if we had not limited our travel to over the holidays, but still I think we got decent tickets considering that it was on the holiday. We flew economy because honestly, first class hasn't been worth the points to me when traveling with my kids. First, the kids complain that they can't reach the screens when they're buckled in because of too much legroom. I know, first world problems. <laughs> but also, we've gotten dirty looks from fellow passengers in the past when we're, you know, traveling with kids and we're in first class and the kids are being kids and uh, the first class passengers want their peace and quiet. That's what they expect. I know I shouldn't care, but I do. And it makes the trip uncomfortable for me knowing that people around me are getting annoyed. So I prefer economy for that reason. Also, I feel like my expectations are so much higher when I'm traveling in first class. So often little things bother me more than they should. And I often end up disappointed. So anyway, we flew economy and it actually worked out great because the kids had their first class pillows, which are these inflatable pillows that fill the space between the seat and the seat in front of us. And so that they could put their feet up and go to sleep. Often I actually end up using them and they sleep on my lap. But anyway, it makes the travel so much more comfortable for all of us. And it worked out great because we had two side-by-side seats. And so we could all kind of put our feet up and get comfortable. So anyway, I don't see the point in spending my points for business class at this stage in our life. But I'd rather spend those points on Hyatt's suites and upgrades there. That's what we did for our Hyatt-centric executive suite in Madrid. It was nice to have a super luxurious room to relax in. After a long day's travel, plus we got a very sweet note from the manager along with a bottle of wine and snacks to welcome us to the room, which is a nice touch by Hyatt that we've gotten used to, and it is a really great way to redeem points for us. 
So after napping and cleaning up on our arrival to Madrid, we went out on the town and got a taste of Spanish tapas and Mercado Central. And then we happened to be there for the annual Christmas tree lighting in central Madrid, which happens on Thanksgiving because they don't celebrate Thanksgiving. And for a Thanksgiving meal, we went to Las Carboneras for an all-you-can-eat meal with an amazing flamenco show. By the way, flamenco is amazing. It's just one guitar and a whole bunch of people tap dancing with emotion and just the artistry is really amazing to watch. So if you ever get a chance to catch a flamenco show, I highly recommend you do. Frugal tip, if you're headed to Madrid, don't go through an English-speaking third-party site like Viator or there are several of them, but they charge double what's the actual restaurant site's price, I found. If you actually go to the restaurant site, and it might be in Spanish, helps if you're Spanish speaking, or you could use the Google Translate service. But if you book it through the actual restaurant site, it's so much cheaper. Also, when traveling in Europe, all vendors will ask you if you want to pay in USD or Euros. Euros is the right answer. That way you get the current exchange rate through your bank or credit card holder. If you pay in USD at the vendor, the exchange rate offered by the vendor usually includes a markup to favor the vendor. So you would save money by paying in euros and then getting the exchange rate that's offered by your bank. For the rest of the trip, we went down to the coast and stayed at another amazing Hyatt property in La Manga. We weren't able to use our free night certificates like I was planning, but we did use our club access certificate to add free club access to our stay, and that saved us a bunch of money on breakfast and snacks. And because we went off season, we were often the only ones in the club giving us a very private and customized experience. For our last stop in Valencia, we used Marriott Homes and Villas. I found Airbnb to be somewhat unreliable in foreign countries, especially India. So I like that the apartment we rented in the middle of downtown Valencia was through Marriott and uh, was guaranteed by them. And we could earn Marriott points for it. And if we'd had the points, we could have used Marriott points to book it. Unfortunately, we didn't. but That's OK. It was still in the budget. We got to top the trip off with some amazing paella on the beach in Valencia, which was a true bucket list item for me. So I'm so glad we got to experience that. Overall, we made some amazing experiences and my kids got to learn a little Spanish and experience Spanish culture. So now that we're back, it's time to get to work on the end of the year financial tasks. So I thought I would share this with you. As the year's wrapping up, it's time to make sure we've taken advantage of all of our financial tools that we have on hand. So I'm going to share my to-do list with you, and I hope that's helpful to you. My first item is to make sure all my employee retirement accounts are maxed out. That's a 401k and 403bs. The contribution limit for 401ks in 2023 is 22500 for employee contributions. Since I changed employers this year, I need to make sure that everything's maxed out for the year manually because half my contributions were at my old employer. Note that the 2024 limits are increasing to 23000 for employee contributions or 69000 max for employee and employer contributions. Also, these are the limits for people less than 50. For people over 50, there are additional catch-up contributions that are allowed. Then we need to make sure our backdoor Roth IRA contributions are done and converted and invested. This is the time to make sure that's all done before the end of the year. It's easy to forget to go back and buy the investments, so make sure you do that too. The 2023 contribution limit for backdoor Roth IRAs or any Roth IRA is 6500 For the 2024 contribution limit is $7,000. We also need to make sure our health savings account contributions are maxed out. Remember that the HSA is triple tax advantage. That means that the money that we put into an HSA doesn't get taxed on the contribution. The growth doesn't get taxed and the withdrawals aren't taxed as long as they're used for healthcare expenses. So for 2023, the contribution limit for family coverage is $7,750. For 2024, the contribution limit is increasing to $8,300 for a family. Next, I need to make sure that all our claims are made through the Dependent Care Flexible Spending Account that we have. We use the Dependent Care FSA to save for childcare expenses. And unlike the HSA, the FSA funds do not roll over, except for a small amount, onto the next year. So it's important to get it all out this year, or at least make sure that the funds are accounted for. 
So we only contribute what we need to the FSA and cash flow the expenses throughout the year. And then we take those funds out at the end of the year using the receipts that we've amassed. This is our way of saving for Christmas expenditures. That way we know that we have the funds for all the Christmas shopping that needs to be done. Next, we need to do the end of the year accounting for our businesses and pay vendors. Part of the fun of owning and running this business is that I get to hire who I want. And I've hired my kids as models. And they even have contributed voice acting to this podcast, as you can see in the disclaimer at the end of each episode. The kids are paid for their efforts and contributions, and we contribute to their Roth IRAs because this is earned money. Part of that process is also filling out appropriate paperwork to make sure they have their modeling permits up to date with the state of New York. New York has a lot more paperwork involved in doing this, but it's worth it to us. The paperwork includes health statement forms from their pediatrician, a form from their school that attests that they're in good standing and getting the appropriate education. That's how they get their modeling permit. And then the business also has to have a permit to employ child models. All of this is basically extra work and headache, but it's worth it to make sure that they're compensated appropriately for the exposure that they're getting. The many years of compounding in their IRAs is a very powerful tool for their future retirement. That's why we do this. Also, Josh and I need to get our end of the year accounting done for our rental properties and for this business and other corresponding businesses with our rental properties. So there's a lot of accounting to be done at the end of the year. So I need to get to that. Next, we need to make sure all our credit card benefits are maxed out. A lot of credit cards we use turn over their benefits at the end of the year. So this year, we made sure to take advantage of global entry credits to get the kids global entry. Josh and I already have it. Some other credits that we need to make sure we maximize are the Amex Platinum Entertainment Credit. I think we've maximized that. The $200 Uber Cash that we get from Amex Platinum, that's doled out on a monthly basis. So we try to max that out throughout the year. The $200 Hotel Credit and the $100 Saks Credit. I have no problem maxing out the Saks Credit. The Chase Sapphire Reserve Card gives a $300 travel credit as well. So I need to make sure we use that. The Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant Card that we have gives us a $300 dining credit, which is a max of $25 a month. So we haven't maxed that, but I'll try to max it for the rest of the year up to the $25 max per month. Finally, charitable contributions are something to think about at the end of the year. Make sure to touch base with your accountant. I did that one already. And as it turns out, even though my husband and I patroned the arts this year with a large donation to our local performing arts center, Thanks to the large standardized deduction, it doesn't move the needle towards itemizing for us this year. We'll probably still take the standard deduction, but it's still nice to support our favorite charity. And it's a good idea to check in with the accountant to see if any last minute charitable contributions may help move the needle in your case. And then this is also the time to tax loss harvest if you have any tax losses in your brokerage account. As the year comes to an end, it's important to harvest any tax losses that are available The market's doing pretty well, so I don't think I have any right now to harvest. But remember that when we tax loss harvest, we sell lots that have a loss and buy similar but not identical funds back at the same time. So we're selling at a loss just to amass the tax losses for paperwork purposes, but we're buying back similar but not identical funds. And that means we don't buy back the same QCIP number and buy something that's basically the same. These losses can then be used to offset active income up to $3,000 a year. And the rest, if you have more, can be rolled over to subsequent years. So this can take off some significant amount off of your tax bill at the end of the year. And then finally, we need to rebalance the portfolio and reassess our goals at the end of the year. So along with tax loss harvesting, Josh and I will sit down and assess the asset allocation in our portfolio. If the allocation is off target to what we set in our financial plan, we'll rebalance using new contributions next year. We also need to sit down and go over our investor policy statement. We use this time to assess how we're doing and if we need to make any changes to our goals moving forward, this is the time to do it. Hopefully it's not a time that's emotional or driven by the market, but more driven by what you want from life and what we want going forward. The end of the year is also a good time to sit down and reassess insurance needs. It's a good time to reassess whether we have enough insurances in place, especially if you've changed jobs. I've changed jobs, so I need to make sure I run my current disability coverage by Pearson Ravitz, who's my disability broker, and make sure that I'm covered in the best way possible. 
Also, it's the time to use up CME and paid leave days. So if you have any CME or paid leave that doesn't roll over to next year, make sure you use them all up. It depends on your institution as to when those things roll over and, you know, when the functioning year ends. So important to look into that and make sure that everything is used up that you need to use up. Now that I've made a, this list, I better get to work and make sure everything is actually done. Do you have things that you do on your to-do list at the end of the year? If you do, please share it with us at the Frugal Physician platforms on Facebook, on the blog, on Instagram. Please make sure you tell us what's going on with you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on your favorite podcasting platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us continue to bring you valuable content. As always, you can connect with us on social media or visit our website at www.thefrugalphysician.com to stay updated on upcoming episodes and events. Thank you for joining us on this journey to financial freedom and empowerment. Until next time, stay frugal, stay inspired, and keep striving for the financial freedom that you deserve. Take care and stay frugal, y'all. Now, a final word from our sponsor. At Pearson Rabbits, they understand that life can change in an instant. It's hard to imagine that a sudden illness, injury, or catastrophic event could put you and your family in a devastating financial situation. Physician-founded and physician-focused, Pearson Rabbits builds human connections before they create quotes. Visit www.pearsonrabbits.com today and embark on your journey to safeguarding your future. The content shared on this podcast should not be taken as individualized financial advice. We are here to share our knowledge and experiences, but it is crucial to consult with professionals such as accountants, financial advisors, or attorneys who can provide personalized guidance based on your specific needs.